Hey, Younger fans, I'm Taylor Strecker, and we're about to go way behind the scenes of the latest episode right here in my living room. This is your Getting Younger After Show. Team Charles must be standing up and cheering right about now because Chiza has reunited while Quinn is on a plane to Mystique all by herself. Here to relive all the romance with me is my guest, Molly Bernard. Hey, girl. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining her. Uh, I'm so glad to be here. Wouldn't have it any other way. Let's talk about the swoon-worthy reunion between Liza and Charles, please and thank you. What was your reaction like to that moment? Charles is so clearly still in love with Liza. So the efforts to be with Quinn just, it, they feel so futile um, because he's struggling, even though he's like mad and he's being a baby about it. But it's uh, it's like finally they're kissing and it's like, it's a hot kiss, I'm into it. <laughs> it was a super romantic turn and what's been a pretty rough season for these two, yeah. mostly because of Charles, if we're gonna be honest, right? I mean, he's been a little bit of a bitch baby. He's been a grumpy grape. <laughs> That's nicer, grumpy grape. In this instance, has love saved the day or do you think Charles has some splaining to do? Okay, so I was thinking, I was like, if I were in Liza's shoes and I knew that he probably also just kissed Quinn like in the airport or something, I'd be like, why am I kissing him right outside of the airport? It, it's just so complicated. And so uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's funny you ask that because I remember thinking like, oh, right what would, what would I do? And, and, and surely their emotion, their emotional state and their feelings for each other are, have got to be so heightened that it overrides everything, right? right? Like, I guess he has explaining to do, but not really. It's, it's so, it's kind of so clear what was going on. It's also like one of those things where it's like, initially, maybe he doesn't have any explaining to do, but like, eventually he will. Right. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Like after sure. one too many glasses of whatever, sunsare, it's like, awesome. remember that time at the airport? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to revisit that. Okay. So another huge event in this episode happened when Lauren's dad had a heart attack um, at a party, but it ended up being okay. And he was treated by Lauren's ex, Dr. Max. Hello. Hello. First off, how much do we love Josh Pace and Kathy and Jimmy as Lauren's parents? I mean, there is no, no better um, combination of human beings. Also, they're featured so much this season and they are so good together. And honestly, not to toot my own horn, but the three of us are so good together yeah. that it's like, it's, it's perfect casting. They're, they're hysterical. And the scene when Max came in they're like, and it was revealed that Max was the doctor who saved you know, Lauren's dad's life. It was, we could not keep it together. It was so funny and so much fun. And it was, even the scene when Josh has the heart attack, or sorry, Josh Pace has the heart attack, that was hysterical. He was like doing these jumping <laughs> And he and Kathy, they just have this crazy fucking alchemy. It's so cool. Speaking of alchemy, were you excited to see Max come back into Lauren's life? Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, it's, I'm so excited for fans to see what happens next because it's just, it's so good. And it's so nice to have, you know, Ben back, but also the presence of Max back. It's like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Well, if memory serves right, they broke up because she thought that being with him made her basic. That's right. Do you think Lauren has moved past worrying about things like that? Or is this fear of being basic like a valid concern? <laughs> I mean, I think... I think there's been a number of seasons, you know, have passed since Lauren's fear of, of being basic was quite present. And I, it's, I think there's, you know, she's on a journey of learning love herself. And I mean, she, she already does love herself so very much as we know. Yes. I think there's part of this that comes with age of like, maybe the people that I love are, are not the, you know, Andy Warhols of the world. They're, they're the, the Tony Fauci's of the world. <laughs> and then, you know what? Yeah. I'll take a Fauci any day of the week. Sure, <laughs> sure. Sign me up. Sign me right up. Sign me up. Um, speaking of exes, can we talk about how Pauline shows up this episode and actively tries to get Charles and Liza back together and like, not ironically, like dead ass serious. I know. How fucking weird is that? That, that made me 
when it when I got the script, I was like, this is kind of funky. And then when I watched the episode, I was like, this is really funky. I like it. <laughs> it's, like it's so sweet. It's just so weird. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Do you think that this act of kindness, rekindling their romance, does it make up for what Pauline did when she outed Liza? I think Pauline might think that it that it's doing that, that it's serving that purpose. But I don't I don't know that it's like a for me my brain didn't like try to make a connection between she's making up for that. It was more like both of those women have been through hell and back with Charles. Yes. So they each have their own, not vendetta, but they have a lot of complicated feelings. And I actually thought a really nice um, olive branch, but not necessarily with the intention of like, okay, great. Now all is forgiven for my, for my anger and my hurt feelings because Pauline was really hurt. Like Liza did that, right? Like, like it's not that Pauline is evil. She was responding to you know, making a, having a deep friendship with Liza and it not being what she thought it was. Pauline, I mean, I feel like she was a bit of a villainess for a moment, but, but like all of the characters in Younger, even the villains aren't really, you can't, you can always empathize with them at some point in time. Yeah. yeah. I know. During this final season of Younger, we've been taking time in each episode of Getting Younger to look back at our favorite scenes. So for better or for worse, Lauren is always looking out for her girl, Kelsey. Let's revisit a scene from season four where Kelsey was the one who had Lauren's back. Let's take a look. On Tuesday, Lindy, Hector and Dorf's VP, asked me to lunch. Lindy's insufferable and talks so much that Hector calls her fat Lindy. Even though she's not fat, that's just as put down for everyone. Anyway, I settle in for a long, boring conversation when Lindy looks at me and she says, You're fired. We need your work phone. Quick and to the point, for the first time in fat Lindy's life. Oh my God, Lauren, I'm so sorry. It's fine, I'll be okay. You know, I was outgrowing the company anyway and I told that to Hector, which in hindsight is probably why this whole thing happened. Okay, look, everything is going to be fine, but you need to leave the nest. No, I can't leave here, Kelsey. I'm not a member. They'll never let me back in. Oh, Lauren, give it up. Okay, this place isn't that great. It's like living in a giant dollhouse. It's over-curated, it's far too flowery, and it's a little infantilizing. Yeah, well, you know what's infantilizing? Being unemployed and living with your parents. I'm not leaving here until I have enough contacts to start my own PR firm. Failure is not an option. I get that, I do but neither is sleeping in a closet, okay? You're coming to stay with me at Josh's, okay? Okay. There's not a shower here, is there? No. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so good. What do you remember about shooting that scene? That scene was so fun. I remember a lot about that, actually. Um, it, it, It was... A very exciting storyline for me because I was super pumped that Lauren was in trouble and that Lauren was struggling. It's really the first time we saw that. And um, yeah, I think having Kelsey show up for Lauren is, we see we see their friendship and we see the, the ride or die of it all. Yeah, that scene was really fun to shoot. I love Andy Fleming. He um, directed that episode. He really, he loves, he loves my camp and he likes the size that that I can, you know, kind of let Lauren go to. And he also was really with me that when Lauren says failure is not an option, that that's not funny. That's dead serious to her. Yeah. And I'm glad that he kept that in the edit because it, uh, that's Lauren's, it's, that's one of her character objectives, right? Is to succeed. I have to say the other day, so I watch, you know, Confession, I watch Younger, like I rewatch it a lot. <laughs> so I happened just the other day, this scene came on. I was like, this is one of the best scenes of all time. It's so brilliant. You're like, you said that you're sleeping in a closet. It's like standing up like a yes. horse. <laughs> it's yes. so good. Speaking of- And that, that also speaks to like the length that Lauren will go to, to not fail. Yes. Yes. I mean, it's really, it's admirable, I would say. (laughs) I have to ask you, what's going to go down as your all-time favorite younger scene? You know, uh, I I could answer it like a couple of different ways. I think the scene in Madison Square Park where uh, the Topless Tuesday scene, like the very first one where we taste of Lauren and who she is, I think... That's one of my favorites because it just, it 
in a nutshell, encompasses what this character is and what how she lives her life. M one of my all-time favorite scenes, for sure, is um, jumping out of the pink Hummer and screaming at Diana, get the Hummer, bitch. <laughs> that <laughs> scene, so fun to shoot. Uh, Hillary and I have a fucking funny scene this year um, where we're, I explained to her why her kind of lying by omission is comparable to her uh, obsession with Chernobyl, <laughs> the show. It's it's a really like funny, nuanced scene that the, it's just, it makes me cackle so much. Okay, so while we're looking back, let's have some fun with the segment we're calling When You Were Younger. I'm going to show you something you said in an interview several seasons ago, and you're going to let us know if anything has changed since then. Back in season four, you talked about being able to relate to Diana's cyber-stalking then-boyfriend Richard's ex. Here you are. Take a look. You talk about, in the context of new relationships, getting to a place where you're secure enough to not want to cyber-stalk the ex, or is that a thing that you just always want to do? No, I, um, I actually relate to it a lot. I, I, I don't necessarily think I'm a jealous person, but I am a curious person and I do have an overactive imagination. So I was actually just telling this to my boyfriend the other day that like, I finally feel like I, or not finally, but I think I really care about him so deeply that I'm not that obsessed with his exes. Like I, I haven't, I think I looked them up once on Instagram and got it out of my system, but it has not been a repeated thing which is like, I like that. I like that I'm getting a little older and there's like just some confidence there. But I totally get like, come on, that person was involved with your person. You got it, you got to look. You know, you can't help it. <laughs> so much has changed. Okay, so Molly, do you think checking out the ex is still a given or has anything changed about what you said when you were younger? Oh boy, first of all, who was I dating? Who was my boyfriend? I, I like, literally don't, don't know. I do not paint the clips. I was just as shook as you. <laughs> wow, my eyes are like watering and these are not tears. These are like confusion. Um, bubble water droplets of confusion. Um, <laughs> I okay, I guess I'm, I, I are confused. Uh, I, whoa. I mean, I think my answer is still the same, just minus boyfriend. But uh, and maybe I was, uh, I don't know. I love to look people up. I love to see what people are doing. <laughs> I know. What are my exes doing? What are their current partners doing? Sometimes I do late night Instagram <laughs> bullshit or late night Google stock. It's not regular. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like obsessed with it, but I I think my younger self might actually have been, in this case, more wise than old girl right now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like. Seeing that clip, I was like, holy growth. That's like was my first reaction, right? Like you were in a totally different place than you were in that clip. And I also, I can totally feel you on that because I, I too see things that I've said from the past and I'm like, who are you, lady? <laughs> to myself. Uh yeah, it's also wild. That's um, it's so crazy to also think that like, uh oh, I am a person who sometimes people interview and there's a camera involved and I see shit. I'm like, uh oh, but it's different. Than I who was the who the fuck was that boyfriend? I don't know. Can a boyfriend that in that what season was that? I'm so confused. Girl, that looked like it was season like one or two, no, two or three, because I had the long red hair. Okay. I have no idea. It might, yeah, it, it might have been the boy before that I was boyfriend and girlfriend with, I guess, before I met Hannah. Uh, when boyfriends have disappeared from the picture. <laughs> Girl, I know. I know how that story goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Molly, there's only one episode left in the whole series. What would you say fans have to look forward to in the series finale of Younger? I personally think it's a beautifully elegant conclusion. It also ends with a ton of possibility as well. I think for the fans of our show, 
they're going to be so happy and sad. It's obviously bittersweet, but it is a beautiful ending. And something that uh, I feel, I feel like I can say to the fans, like, we took care of you. Thank you so much, Mala, for joining. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I love. I love. I'll see you soon. Uh, yes, please. I know. I need to look at that loft. It looks so pretty. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Really? It's yours. Oh, my God. Thank you. You're I can't wait. Nobody invite me over. I'm ready. You're welcome. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for watching along. I'm Taylor Strecker, and this is Getting Younger. Join me again right here after the next episode for more behind-the-scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, here's a sneak peek of what's coming up. What happened? Charles and Quinn take off to paradise, and you spend the night in some dive bar somewhere? Um, not exactly. Charles didn't get on the plane. Maggie, he told me that he loved me. And... It's Cass. Oh, hold that thought. Okay. Good morning, Cass. Listen. Maggie, now that your career is blowing up, thanks in no small part to yours truly, I'd like my sculpture back. Oh, that's fair. It's here. You can come pick it up anytime. I don't have time to schlep to Brooklyn. Can you send it to me? And please sign it, because now it may actually be worth something. You know, I'm not sending the sculpture. I... Fine. Just bring it to dinner, then. Wait, did I miss an invitation? For what? Dinner? Oh, yeah, sure, I'll have dinner with you. We'll figure everything out then. My treat. I'll send you the deets. Is everything okay? Uh, yeah, Cass, she wants to take me to dinner. L like I owe her something. She wants to take you to dinner. Yeah, we have a complicated history, Liza. I mean, I don't think I need to explain that kind of thing to you. All right, touche. Anyway, I'm just glad that you're home safe. And as far as the rest of the story goes, may I just say, I don't understand straight people. You look crazier than the gays.